What's up guys? One of Jeff and I's favorite topics, swim baits and the rods to throw them on. We talk about swim bait rods a lot. Today we are going to highlight three rods that are really kind of taking the world in our store by storm. These rods have been out a couple years, but they're just now getting some traction and guys are really responding to them well. And one of the coolest things about these rods is they're designed as travel rods, but they perform like amazing one-piece rods. This is the breakdown of the Valkyrie World Expedition swim bait models. Let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. What's up my friends, I'm Ben with The Hookup Tackle, the Tackle Taku on Instagram, being joined by my buddy Jeffrey the King. What's up Jeffrey the King? You, uh, you look good today. Thank you sir. I am in the new stone camo. That has to be it, yes. Hookup merch from Anetic, loving it. Got my red American flag hat. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm styling. Oh, I yeah. sound good, I'm all clear. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, no allergies happening at all, so. Life is good. Living your best life. This is it, man. This is it. Can you post a picture of me on the beach with those hot chicks in the Orion again? Just so I can watch this video? Yeah, highly real stuff. So today we are diving into a topic that really you should probably be giving. Mm. But this will be fun for me to talk back and forth with you and to kind of bounce some ideas off each other and bring to light one of, I think, the most unique rods in the shop or rod lines in the shop, and really a line that people should definitely pay attention to for throwing larger baits, whether it be big cranks, big weights, rats, or swim baits, and that's the Valkyrie World Expedition rods. Now, you and I have been throwing these now for about a year and a half, Yeah, I'd say, mm -hmm. right? And so we have some pretty good experience and time behind these rods. Here's what's exciting about this. Most of the time with swim bait rods, you know, they're seven and a half, eight foot rods. <clears throat> Very rarely in what I can think back through time, has there really been a true multi-piece swim bait rod that really performed like a one piece rod, right? Usually you're always sacrificing some kind of quality to go into a multi-piece rod, right? And <clears throat> really the idea behind that is you know, traditionally, the way brands built multi-piece rods, they take a one-piece rod and they basically just cut it in half, right? Ferrell it, and you know, now you got a two-piece rod. So all you've really done is kind of weakened the rod because now you've created a joint that didn't need a joint, right? So that's historically been the way brands have created multi-piece rods. We're gonna dive into this a little bit and give a little back story and a little bit of history so you kind of understand how these rods were developed and what makes them unique because i really want you guys to think about these and enjoy these if this is something that might fit in to your lane so <clears throat> let's go back several years mega bass got together with one of their top pro staffers sugimura uh, one of the most famous guides on lake biwa and he wanted to work with Megabass to create a line of rods that were specific for fishing on Biwa and for him and his clients, right? And that created the line called Valkyrie. Okay, now Valkyrie's been in the Megabass world for several years now. The idea behind this was, you know, Sugi would spend most of his time fishing pretty shallow water power fishing, right? So as the trend of rods was to get lighter and lighter and lighter, he wanted to build a line of rods that was really built for power first, 
and not really worry about weight. He was making shorter cast, heavier line reaction baits, crank baits, jerk baits, spinner baits, all the things that Megabass is famous for, right? He wanted rods that really could handle abuse of clients, abuse of you know heavy weight, heavy lines, and could land potentially monstrous fish, right? I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the next world record's coming from Biwa. What would you say? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so the lake is just, it's got the potential of having giants in it, right? So what Megabass did <clears throat> is they went through all the different types of materials and they landed on fiberglass and carbon being a certain amount of composite for each rod. And that the fiberglass would give the rod the needed strength that he was looking for in the rod. And the carbon would give the rod the needed you know, rigidity so that it wasn't just a, a limp noodle like a lot of people think of like super old school fiberglass, right? So we got this incredible line of Valkyries and some of the models have been standout, 7.1 medium heavy, right? I mean, it's one of my favorite rods Megabass ever made for little jackhammers and square bills and that kind of stuff. 7.4 heavy, you know, amazing jerkbait rods like the 6.9 medium, the 6.6 medium plus that I use all the time. So it created this amazing lineup of rods, right? Now, at the same time <clears throat> that Megabass was creating that, they were also working to kind of redevelop the multi-piece rod and they were working on a line called Triza. We talk about Triza here a lot. It was the first rod to really kind of take into the idea that instead of making a rod and just cutting it into pieces and ferreling it, what if they made each specific piece unique so that when it came together, it created a rod that nobody could ever make in a one piece rod, right? So they were developing this new tech, this new you know, idea of how to create a multi-piece while at the same time, building these amazing rods. And so when Triza came out, it was super well received, super popular. It became a favorite amongst, you know, many, many people, myself included. What they found was that a traveling angler wants to fish more than just bass or more than just trout, right? So a guy that travels who wants to throw a big bait for bass, for instance, he probably wants to take his family on vacation to the beach and maybe wants to throw something in the surf or maybe wants to fire over this rock jetty at a snook or a calico, or maybe he wants to go up to Canada and fish for pike, right? Or down to South America and fish for peacock bass or whatever. So they wanted to set out to create a travel line of rods that could handle that. Big baits, big fish, freshwater, saltwater, just high impact. And it just made sense to take the line of rods that they developed to be super strong and kind of combine them and hybrid it with that Triza tech and create a line of multi-piece rods that could stand up to the abuse. And that's basically what we have here with the Valkyrie World Expedition line. And this has become one of their best-selling lines of rods that they've ever put out. There's all kinds, it's, it's probably about a 20 model line. There's some spinning, there's some casting. There's a lot of lighter sizes as well. So we're gonna highlight the three swim bait rods today, but there's all kinds of rods in here. So if you're looking for something lighter to throw a little jerk bait or a small crank bait, they've got that covered as well. But let's dive in to this line and let me just walk through it with you real quick. And we're gonna highlight the three rods so that you know exactly what they're built to do and what they do. So first up, all of these rods, as I mentioned, are multi-piece. Now, we've covered multi-piece in the past, We've talked about how you do not need to be nervous about ferals anymore. If you guys have been fishing any type of Japan swim bait rod, really, I mean, for the last 20 years, they pretty much all come feraled at the grip, right? So a feral is tech that is, has been around for ages and ages and ages. All of this is so advanced that yes, it's a multi-piece. Once it's together, you really don't ever have to worry about it as long as you assemble it correctly, right? So let's just talk about that really quick. As you assemble multi-piece rods, you're gonna have basically your straight line, right? So like here's where your reel's gonna sit. All your guides are gonna go in a certain direction. All of these are gonna, you're gonna push these together at an angle, okay? So this is gonna be 
So this is going to be off center to the rod and then you are going to twist it straight, okay? So it's that twisting that is gonna bond those two pieces there to prevent any kind of slippage. If you're gonna break a multi-piece rod, it's almost always because you just didn't put them together and bond it right. So if you don't put it together correctly, then these two pieces will have a tendency to kind of slip out and then it just, you put too much weight on the ferrule end. So again, just put it in at a slight angle and then you're gonna twist it straight. And then once it's straight, it's on there. Okay, if you guys are taking your rods apart a lot, <clears throat> then you can always get some ferrule wax. Super easy to find, every fly shop in the world sells it. And you can just put a little bit of ferrule wax on that piece as well and that'll just help bond it. I've had this whole line now for, again, about a year and a half, I've never taken them apart. So, hmm. like once you put them together, <clears throat> I didn't buy these to be multi-piece, I thought they were dope that they were multi-piece, but I bought them just because I wanted the rod because I liked the actions of the rods. I liked the way they felt in my hand. Um, so that's that's what I did. So you guys might find yourself in that same situation where you know you may not even need to ever take these things apart. You might just keep them, right? So <clears throat> as far as styling goes, nice, clean, simple split grip. It's got EVA foam. It's super comfortable. You have a double lockdown twist here for the reel so you're gonna get it on there and you're gonna basically have another lock on there as well just to make sure that everything stays solid. It's got big rear grips back here so you've got a big grip to reach back and cast for throwing heavier baits. They're all finished in a cork so if you do need to kind of stick it in your gut, maybe you're fishing something that's really going to pull, I mean that sounds dope, right? You've got that ability as well plus they're just super, super clean, right? So. Let's fly through these models. Let me, let me cover them with you real quick and <clears throat> we'll break this down. So there are three models <clears throat> that are considered quote unquote swim bait rods, okay? This is the first one. This is the 7.8 Heavy, okay? And these are all gonna be four piece. Now, <clears throat> spec this guy out for you. Uh, this is gonna have a max lure rating of 120 grams, okay? Which is gonna be just over four ounce. Okay, now this is a very parabolic rod. If you think, I would say like Launcher and Leviathan kind of had a baby, right? That's kind of how this rod is. So it's gonna bend pretty deep through the rod. It's got a little bit more glass in it than the next two we're gonna talk about. So it's gonna lend itself really, really well to treble hook baits, okay? So this is a rod that we're going to be throwing things like a crawler. Smaller glide, like a Gancraft 178 or 148, something like that. It's also a great rod as a, a deep crank rod. So you want to throw a big M, a 10XD, you know, big lipless, deep six, right? This is the rod for that. It's amazing at throwing that one to two ounce stuff, it's right in the wheelhouse, it's gonna load really well, it's gonna absorb all that crank on a deep crank. It's just a great one, shad glides, small little, you know, any multi-segment type baits that you're fishing really fast, that's gonna be a killer one. Whopper ploppers, wake baits, all that's gonna be in that wheelhouse, okay? Now, <clears throat> we jump up from that rod to this guy, and this is gonna be the 711 Extra Heavy. Okay, so we're getting a little bit beefier. We added three inches. Now this guy is going to spec out max lure rating at 150 grams. Okay, so that's just over five ounces now. So we've added a little bit extra weight. Still pretty parabolic, but much more powerful. Okay, so kind of gone is that real glassy feel of the first one. And now we're into more of a true, what I would consider like parabolic swim bait rod type taper. Okay. Jeff, which one do you throw most often? I throw the double X. Yeah. You're throwing the double X. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll get your feedback on that one here in a second. This is the one that I find myself throwing the most. This is kind of in my wheelhouse of baits that I like to fish. This would fish things like, you know, a tiny clash would be great on this. Other things, you know, like this sized bait, Slide Swimmer 175, any of your bluegill style baits would be great on this. You know, rats, 
and you're gonna throw a PB wrap, you know, up to like a GanCraft 230. This is gonna kind of be like right at the <clears throat> edge of that rod. It's gonna throw all of these things incredibly well. You're gonna get that great load from the rod, right? But you're still gonna have that power and parabolic kind of walking that line of the perfect blend of the two, right? So it's not real fast. So I wouldn't pick that rod to be a great soft bait rod, but for throwing the hard baits and this kind of stuff, glides, rats, big top waters like a mega dog, that rod's amazing. Okay, <clears throat> now, the big dog of the lineup is this guy. This is the eight foot double extra heavy, okay? And this is the one that you throw, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one is gonna max out at 180 grams, okay? So about six and a half ounces is what they're calling for max lure rate. I can tell you it's probably closer to eight ounces. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would, I would tell you with all confidence, throw the six ounce bait on this thing, no problem. It's got a lot more rod left uh, throwing that rod. Now this rod is much more powerful than those first two that we just talked about. I know it only jumped up like basically an ounce, ounce and a half in lure rate, but this is a much more powerful rod. You can see that gone is that like true parabolic through the middle. And you're gonna really just have more of that top section load, but it still gives. Because it's a glass carbon composite, it's not a broomstick. So it can be stiff and fast, but still have some give on there for throwing a big glide, right? So this rod also, I should note, you're gonna jump into a one piece EVA foam. So you no longer have that split grip. So now you're just back to that one big piece of foam. Now, this rod's gonna be a great one for throwing something like this. You wanna throw an eye slide. <clears throat> you wanna throw, you know, a slide swimmer 250. You wanna throw a big soft bait like a HUD or seven inch citizen or battle shack, something like that. This is going to be the rod to throw. Jeff, give me some feedback on it. What's, uh, since you're familiar with it, what are your thoughts and feelings on it? Well, it's interesting to kind of backtrack. You say you don't take yours apart. I, right. I only use that rod to travel with because I travel so much to Minnesota and we use it as a musky rod. Hmm. So we're fishing, I, we, well, we like fishing that mega dog on that rod yep. and it works it so well. And dude, you can cast that mega dog so far in it just because that tip, it loads the bait and you can fire so far away yeah but like you said it's still low so like when you have a mega dog it has three giant treble hooks on it and you hook a fish if it if it was a broomstick dude we wouldn't land any single fish but Agreed. since it loads you know those musky would they would come up eat the bait and the rod would you know absorb the bite and then you can lay into them and we landed every fish we hooked on it so Sick. we were fishing you know the mega dog on it we were fishing bucktails on it we're fishing big rubbers and the rod handles it perfectly fine like you said 250 on it would be great as well like anything in that four to six ounce range that rod super shines yeah and i really think that that's an important statement that you just made <clears throat> you're going to want a little heavier bait here to really get the full advantage of this rod yeah right so i would not get this rod if you're primarily throwing like two ounce baits you're it can throw it obviously but you really want to push that four ounce mark, like what you're talking about. Three, four ounce bait to really give some weight to load that tip is really going to be important here. And Jeff, you kind of made the point for what they built these rods for. A guy that travels that does more than just one species. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So these weren't built as musky rods. No. But, but they're completely they functional yeah. as musky rods. Yeah. And I could see everything that you just talked about with that mega dog i could see this tip being so perfect. perfect for that just yeah. perfect yeah so dope i'm glad it's working for you i'm glad the land ratio is like that i'm knocking on wood for you <laughs> right. i hope that stays <laughs> your land ratio right so so there you go guys there are the three rods in this line you know the crazy thing about rod tech is as rods change and as trends come and go, right? Things come to light and become part of arsenals that you may never have thought would have been in your arsenal, right? I would have never thought a decade ago that I would have 
a multi-piece rod in my lineup, mm -hmm. let alone, I probably have like a dozen of them now between Triza, World Expedition, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if this seems like a foreign territory to you, like, ah, oh, you know, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a multi-piece, right? Because we get a lot of resistance on that. And it's okay, too. If you don't want a multi-piece rod, don't worry about it, you know? But I just don't want you guys to be scared about it because they're built so beautifully and they turn into just masterful sticks. I mean, you can really use them for a lot of things. I mean, Jeff, could you imagine if this was a one-piece, eight-foot rod and you had to travel back and forth with tubes and I mean it would completely change your flow oh, dude. Yeah. of having to of how you travel yeah you couldn't just take this you know rod in a sock and throw it in your suitcase no and go no right so you know it's giving us all an opportunity I've got a travel rod in my car when I take my kids downtown mm -hmm. that I just keep in my trunk and you know some days I got to kill a couple hours and I put it together really fast fast and I fish a little pond and yep. take it apart there's just so much versatility to these rods, but they're also amazing rods if you guys just need some swim bait alternatives. The other thing that's dope about these rods is you're basically getting a super high end swim bait rod in this without paying super high end swim bait prices. So 369, 379, 389, kind of in that mid price range for this style rod, it's a great bang for the buck. So hopefully that was insightful. Hopefully if you guys are in the market for, you know, know whether it's a new swim bait rod or just looking for a super dope travel rod that can do a lot of bigger things than what traditional travel rods are built to do, definitely give these a look. If you guys have questions on any of these models, drop it down below and Jeff and I will give you guys our feedback uh, and answer the best we can. So guys, appreciate it as always. Thank you for the time. Thank you for your business. I hope you pick one up and you go travel somewhere fun. Mm -hmm. I hope you go catch a big one. And I'm excited to see what happens again for you on Muskie. You going Muskie this year? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Oh yeah. So we'll be following along. Yeah, just don't subscribe to his channel. Don't do it. Yeah. All right, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for a wonderful morning. Absolutely. Cheers, my friends. Peace out. Till next time.